Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. In this lecture, we are going to cover the stomach or the physiology of the stomach, and we, go to, we are going to talk about gastric secretion and gastric emptying. So, the secretion and the motility of the stomach. The objectives of this lecture are to describe the anatomy, histology, and functions of the stomach, discuss the composition of the gastric juice, describe the mechanism of HCL secretion, discuss the regulation of HCL secretion, then describe the storage, digestion, and motility roles of the stomach, and describe how gastric emptying is regulated. First, let's quickly remember the different parts of the stomach or the anatomy of the stomach. The stomach has four main regions. These are the cardia here, this part, the fundus here in the upper part of the stomach. Then we have the main part of the stomach, the body. And finally, we have the pylorus that is composed of the pyloric antrum and the pyloric canal that is surrounded by the pyloric sphincter. Histologically, the wall of the stomach is composed of the four basic layers like other parts of the alimentary canal. These are the mucosa, the submucosa, the muscularis, and the serosa. If you notice here that the mucosa is relatively thick in the stomach because it contains the gastric glands. The gastric glands are part of the mucosa and they open into the lumen through opening. We call them the gastric pits. And again, the epithelium of the gastric mucosa is composed of simple columnar cells. The submucosa is a dense connective tissue that contains blood vessels, lymphatics, as well as the submucosal plexus. And then we have the muscularis that is composed of three layers in the stomach, the oblique layer, so we have an additional layer, a third layer, the oblique layer, then we have the circular layer, then we have the longitudinal muscle layer that is separated from the circular layer by the myenteric plexus and the outermost layer is the serosa which is a simple uh, squamous epithelium so the stomach wall is composed of the same four basic layers as the rest of the GIT with certain modifications that are necessary for the functions of the stomach first the innermost layer is the mucosa it is composed of simple columnar epithelium or epithelial cells called the surface mucus cells. The epithelial cells extend down into the lamina propria where they form columns of secretory cells called gastric glands that open into the lumen through the gastric pits. And the gastric glands are the source of gastric secretion. Then in the mucosa, we have the lamina propria, an areolar connective tissue through which the gastric glands extend. Then we have the muscularis mucosa, a thin layer of smooth muscles, which is part of the mucosa and separates the mucosa from the submucosa that contains lymphatics, blood vessels, and the submucosal plexus. The external uh, the muscularis externa is composed of three layers. As I said, there is an additional inner oblique layer in addition to the circular and the longitudinal uh, smooth muscle layers. The serosa, simple squamous epithelium and areolar connective tissue. This uh, serosa is part of the visceral peritoneum. Now, if we... Uh, have a closer look to the to one of the gastric glands what are the different cells that are present in a gastric gland first of all here we have the lumen of the stomach the gastric glands open into the lumen or opens into the lumen through the opening of the gland that is called the gastric 
pit. The lining of the uh, of the epithelium of the mucosa that lines the, the the lumen of the stomach is called the surface mucus cell. These cells secrete mucus. Then if we go deep into the gland, into the neck of the gland, we can see mucus neck cells. Again, these cells secrete mucus. There is a difference in the quality of mucus between produced by the surface mucus cells and mucus neck cells. The surface mucus cells usually produce thick mucus compared to the mucus neck cells that produce thin mucus. And this is logic because if the mucus neck cells produce thick mucus, this thick mucus will block the gastric pit and will not allow the flow of gastric juice into the lumen. Next to the mucus neck cells, deep into the gland, we find specialized cells called the parietal cells. The parietal cells secrete hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor a factor which is very important for the absorption of vitamin B12 as we will see later. If we go deep into the gland then we encounter another type of cells called the chief cells. The chief cells are the cells that release digestive enzymes so they secrete pepsinogen for the digestion of proteins and gastric lipase for the digestion of lipids or triglycerides. And then we have, we can, in the gastric gland, we encounter another type of cells. These are endocrine cells that release the uh, hormone gastrin, and we call them G cells. So the gastric glands, we can see exocrine cells like the mucus neck cells, parietal cells, and chief cells that release their secretion into the lumen of the gland, and then through the gastric pit into the lumen of the stomach, while we can see endocrine cells that release their hormones into the bloodstream. That's why they are endocrine cells. Their secretion do not flow through tubes or canals of the gland. So the gastric glands contain different types of cells. First type of cells or first group of cells are exocrine cells that secrete their product into the stomach lumen. One of them is the mucus neck cells that produce and secrete mucus. Parietal cells that produce and secrete hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor. Chief cells produce and secrete the enzyme pepsinogen, which is protein digesting enzyme and gastric lipase. The secretions of mucus, parietal and chief cells from the gastric juice uh, totals about 1.5 to 2 liters per day. So the gastric juice volume is about 1.5 to 2 liters per day. The gastric glands also contain uh, endocrine cells that secrete their products into the blood and these include mainly the G cells that are located mainly in the pyloric antrum that they are mainly present in the mucosa or in the gastric glands of the pyloric antrum they secrete the hormone gastrin into the blood stream. What are the functions of the stomach? the stomach serves as a reservoir as a storage site for food or a temporary storage site for food before its release into the small intestine the stomach due to the thick muscularis externa that contains an extra oblique inner oblique muscle layer uh, it, uh, the, it mixes saliva, food, and gastric juice to form the chyme. So chyme is a mixture of saliva, food, and gastric juice. The stomach also secretes gastric juice, which contains hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid kills bacteria and causes protein denaturation. 
Also, the gastric juice contains pepsin, which begins, uh, begins the digestion of proteins, intrinsic factor, which is important for the absorption of vitamin B12 in the terminal ileum, and also secrete gastric lipase that aids in the digestion of triglycerides. The other function of the stomach, it acts as an endocrine uh, gland because it secretes one important hormone that is gastrin into the blood. Now let's talk about gastric filling with food and the storage of food for a while before it's emptying into the small intestine. The volume of an empty stomach or the volume of the stomach between meals is only 50 milliliter, so it is very small. The stomach is, is able to accommodate a 20 fold change in its volume up to 100, uh, 1000 ml or 1 liter without much increase in the intragastric pressure. So the stomach can distend 20 folds, so its volume becomes 1 liter without an increase in the pressure. We don't need an increase in the pressure in the stomach, otherwise food will regurg or will regurgitate into the esophagus and this will cause problem. During a meal, the stomach relaxes slightly with swallowing and this is called receptive relaxation. Receptive relaxation enhances the stomach ability to accommodate extra volume of food without increasing the intragastric pressure. When the stomach is over distended, for example with food that has a volume more than one liter, then the intragastric pressure will increase. This can put uh, pressure on the lower esophageal sphincter. It will become incompetent and content will regurgitate from the stomach into the lower esophagus and this may might lead to the inflammation of the esophagus or a condition called esophagites or gastroesophageal reflux disease. Gastric mixing after food enters the stomach gentle rippling peristaltic movement called mixing waves pass over the stomach every 15 to 25 seconds so gentle contractions or peristaltic movement will pass uh, from the uh, fundus towards the pyloric antrum every 15 to 25 seconds these waves macerate or will tear food, mix food with the gastric uh, secretion or with the gastric juice and it will reduce the food to a soupy uh, liquid called chyme. So now the food bolus uh, after being mixed with the gastric juice it will become like a soup that is called chyme. More vigorous mixing waves will begin in the body of the stomach and the intensity of those contractions will become stronger and stronger as the contractions approach the pyloric sphincter. Each mixing wave periodically forces about 3 milliliter of chyme into the duodenum. So these strong uh, mixing waves will not empty large amount of chyme into this into the duodenum but it will just allow 3 ml of chyme to enter the duodenum with each contraction because the pyloric sphincter is partially open and this is important because the duodenum cannot deal with large amount of acidic chyme that's why every time with each contraction a smaller amount is released or emptied into the duodenum the duodenum will, will work on that amount until the next emptying that will empty three, another 3 ml of chyme most of the chyme as we see here in this figure will be forced back into the, into the body of the stomach where another 
uh, wave or another cycle of mixing will occur so mixing is a continuous process gastric emptying the periodic release of chyme from the stomach into the duodenum is called gastric emptying and uh, as i said with each contraction or with each strong contraction about 3 ml of chyme will be released or emptied into the duodenum Peristaltic contractions start from the mid-stomach or the body of the stomach towards the antrum and the contractions get bigger or stronger as they move towards the pylorus. Gastric emptying time is normally two to four hours. So if the stomach is full after a meal, we need two to four hours to entirely empty the stomach and the stomach will go back to its empty volume which is 50 ml gastric emptying time depends on the type of food that we eat so it is short when we eat carbohydrate rich meals and somewhat longer with high protein food and it is very long after fat rich meal so when we eat a meal which is rich in large amount of triglycerides this will lead to prolonged gastric emptying so food will stay longer in the stomach gastric emptying is regulated by neural and hormonal reflexes as we said the digestive system is under the control uh, of neurons and hormones in the lecture or in the introduction lecture of the digestive system so distension of the stomach stimulates emptying by either uh, increasing the secretion of gastrin from the gastric glands uh, or and the uh, stimulation of long reflex arc so the distension of the stomach will stimulate mechanoreceptors in the wall of the stomach uh, sensations will be carried to the central nervous system and action potential will come back through the motor fibers or the parasympathetic fibers in the vagus nerve both of them will cause contraction of the lower esophageal sphincter to avoid any regurg increase the stomach motility so this will increase gastric emptying and also will cause the relaxation of the pyloric sphincter and this will allow chyme to pass from the stomach into the duodenum so this tension of the stomach stimulates emptying by stimulation of gastrin release and increases uh, vagus nerve activity distension of the duodenum on the other hand will inhibit stomach emptying by increasing the release of cholecystokinin from the intestinal glands or via the enterogastric reflex distension of the of the duodenum will cause stimulation of mechanoreceptors uh, uh, information or action potential will be processed through short uh, reflex arc or local reflexes that will lead to inhibition of gastric empty in addition to distension other uh, stimuli can decrease gastric emptying like the presence of fatty acids in the duodenum presence of glucose partially digested proteins in the duodenum or the, in the chyme that is delivered to the duodenum so distension of the duodenum inhibits stomach emptying by stimulation of cholecystokinin released from the intestinal glands or the crypts of liberkin and through a neural through neural reflexes like the enterogastric reflex that inhibits or that inhibit gastric emptying uh, now let's talk about the mechanical and chemical digestion that happen or that occur in the stomach mechanical digestion we know that the stomach muscularis externa is thick strong so mixing waves uh, will cause gentle rippling peristaltic movements that will create the chyme as i previously explained mixing the food bullets with the gastric uh, juice to produce a soupy liquid that is called chyme. Chemical digestion in the stomach 
digestion by salivary amylase will continue until this enzyme is inactivated by the acidic gastric juice so, so the low pH in the stomach then ca that can reach values of 2 will immediately activate salivary amylase and will stop its activity on starch parietal cells that are present in the gastric glands secrete hydrochloric acid which kills many microbes denaturates proteins and also activates pepsinogen that is secreted by chief cells that are also present or part of the gastric glands and HCL will activate pepsinogen into pepsin which is the active form of the enzyme pepsin digests protein so protein digestion occurs in the stomach because the gastric juice contains pepsinogen that will be activated to pepsin by hydrochloric acid gastric lipase which is also released by the chief cells splits triglycerides into fatty acids and monoglycerides small amount of nutrient absorption happens in the stomach like water ions short chain fatty acids and certain drugs like aspirin as well as alcohol now let's talk about the composition of the gastric juice or the features of gastric juice about 1.5 to 2 liters of gastric juice are produced by the gastric glands per day it has a pH less than 2 in addition to water and ions gastric juice contains hydrochloric acid HCl secreted from parietal cells it acidifies the food and stops the action of salivary amylase it kills ingested microbes it provides acidic environment for the activation of pepsinogen into pepsin another component of the gastric juice is mucus prevents mechanical injury to the stomach by lubricating the contents and chemical injury by acting as a barrier between the stomach wall and the corrosive gastric juice so it, it provides both uh, physical and chemical barrier uh, against the damage of the mucosa of the stomach pepsinogen it is released from the gastric glands as an inactive proenzyme secreted by chief cells activated to pepsin by HCL and it breaks proteins to smaller molecules another important uh, component of the gastric juice is intrinsic factor it is secreted by the parietal cells the same cells that produce hydrochloric acid it aids in vitamin b12 absorption in the terminal area the last part of the part of the small intestine if i ask you a question can i uh, add gastrin the hormone gastrin as one component of the gastric juice the answer is no because gastrin is a hormone that will be released into the blood so it is not part or it is not one of the components of the gastric juice so please be careful now let's uh, describe or discuss how uh, HCL is secreted from the parietal cells the parietal cells are <coughs> they contain uh, certain enzymes and certain pumps in their cell membrane that make them uh, the appropriate cells to produce hydrochloric acid so the parietal cells are rich in carbonic anhydrase enzyme the carbonic anhydrase enzyme will catalyze the 
the reaction between water and carbon dioxide to produce carbonic acid. Carbonic acid will dissociate into hydrogen and bicarbonate. Then, as I said, carbonic acid dissociates uh, to give hydrogen and bicarbonate. Hydrogen is extruded into the lumen of the stomach in exchange for potassium using this pump which is very uh, important pump and it is a target of one of the treatments of peptic ulcer the pump is called proton pump or hydrogen potassium pump and this pump is present in the apical membrane of the parietal cell that faces the lumen of the stomach bicarbonate that is generated by the uh, from the dissociation of carbonic acid will leave the cell it should leave the cell because we want to keep the pH of the cell suitable for the metabolic reaction of the cell so it will leave the cell into the blood by the bicarbonate chloride antiporter that is present in the basolateral membrane of the parietal cell so bicarbonate will leave and this will be exchanged for chloride Chloride now is concentrated in the cell. It has it has a channel here that will allow chloride to leave the cell, and this will lead to the uh, secretion of hydrogen and chloride into the lumen of the gastric gland. The bicarbonate leaving the gut elevates the pH of blood after a meal. And this is called the alkaline tide. So bicarbonate that leaves the parietal cell and enters the blood will change or will elevate the pH of the blood transiently after a meal. And this is called alkaline tide. And this alkaline tide will make alkaline urine after a meal. Okay. Now what are or how HCL secretion is regulated. HCL secretion by the parietal cells can be stimulated by acetylcholine that is released by parasympathetic neurons. As I said previously, the parasympathetic system is stimulatory on the GIT and part of the GIT are the gastric glands with their parietal cells. So acetylcholine released from activated parasympathetic neurons will cause uh, stimulation of the HCL secretion from the parietal cells. Here we can see that the parietal cells or the basolateral membrane of parietal cell expresses or uh, has uh, acetylcholine receptors that bind or recognize acetylcholine. Another stimulus for the parietal cell is the hormone gastrin secreted by the G cells that are present abundantly in the gastric glands of the pyloric antrum. And again, we see that the basolateral membrane of the parietal cells have or has gastrin receptors that can bind gastrin. Another uh, chemical that can stimulate uh, HCL secretion is histamine. It is released by mast cells present in the lamina propria, which is part of the mucosa. Again, the basolateral membrane of the parietal cell has a histamine receptor that binds and recognizes uh, binds and recognizes histamine. Receptors for all three substances are present in the plasma membrane of the parietal cells as I mentioned a few seconds ago. Acetylcholine and gastrin stimulate parietal cells to, to secrete more HCL in the presence of histamine. So if we want, if we have a patient with hypersecretion of HCL, then one of the treatment options is to block these receptors. For example, to block acetylcholine or block the gastrin receptor or histamine receptor. 
the histamine receptors on parietal cells are called H2 receptors. We have different subtypes of histamine receptors, H1, H2, and so on. So the subtype expressed by the parietal cells is H2 receptor. So if I have a patient with peptic ulcer, if I give him uh, H2 receptor blocker, then I can decrease HCL secretion, and this will decrease the acidity of gastric juice and will give time for the mucosa to heal. Acid secretion is inhibited. In the previous slide, we, we spoke about factors that increase acid secretion like acetylcholine, gastrin, and histamine. In this slide, we talk about uh, factors that decrease or hormones that decrease or inhibit gastric secretion. Acid secretion is inhibited by secretin, a hormone secreted from the duodenum in response to low pH. So if the an acidic chyme is delivered to the duodenum, the duodenum or the intestinal glands in the duodenum will sense that low pH and secretin will be released from the intestinal glands into the blood. It will circulate to the, to the stomach and it will inhibit parietal cells. Another hormone secreted from the duodenum is cholecystokinine. The presence of fatty acids in chyme that is emptied into the duodenum will stimulate the CCK cells in the duodenum or in the small intestinal glands. Again, it will circulate through the blood to the stomach and there it will inhibit the parietal cells in the gastric glands. And here in this uh, figure we see a summary uh, of the different factors that stimulate and inhibit the release of HCL and these are gastrin, uh, vagus nerve that carries parasympathetic fibers, secretin and consistokinin. Gastric secretion has phases. So phases of gastric secretion, we have three main phases of gastric secretion and we name them based on the uh, origin of stimulus to that that initiates gastric secretion. We have the cephalic phase and it begins in the brain as we'll see in the coming slides. And we have the gastric phase that is initiated in the stomach and we have the intestinal phase that is initiated in the small intestine. The gastric or the cephalic phase is mediated by the parasympathetic fibers that run in the vagus nerve. It, uh, the parasympathetic fibers will excite pepsin and acid production. The gastric phase is mediated by local nervous secretory reflexes, short reflexes, vagal or long reflexes, as well as gastrin histamine stimulation, as we'll see in the coming slides. The intestinal phase is mediated by uh, reflexes, neural reflexes, as well as by hormones. So the three phases named according where the stimuli originate, the cephalic phase accounts for 40% of total acid secretion. It involves the CNS, smelling, chewing, swallowing or thinking of food will send impulses via the vagus nerve to parietal and G cells of the stomach. Effects are mediated by acetylcholine and gastrin releasing peptide. These are the neurotransmitters released by, from the nerve endings of the parasympathetic fibers. The gastric phase accounts for 50% of the total acid secretion and it is initiated by either gastric distension that will stimulate mechanoreceptors in the wall of the stomach. This will initiate short local enteric and long vago vega reflexes and this in turn or both in turn will stimulate parietal cells and G cells and parietal cells with the help of gastrin 
Antastylcholine released from the vagus nerve terminals will increase HCL secretion. Also, a stimulant of the gastric phase is the presence of partially digested proteins in the lumen of the stomach. This partially digested or these partially digested proteins will directly stimulate G cells in the pyloric antrum and this will lead to gastrin secretion and we know that gastrin can stimulate parietal cells to produce HCL. The intestinal phase, it, uh, it is responsible for 10% of total acid secretion. <clears throat> the stension of the duodenum with partially digested food stimulates the duodenal mucosa to secrete intestinal gastrin. The intestinal glands also contain some G cells that are able to release gastrin open stretch or the presence of partially digested food in chyme. And gastrin will circulate in the blood, reach the stomach and the gastric glands where it will stimulate the parietal cells to produce and secrete HCL. This intestinal phase is brief it is short lasting and it is followed immediately by an inhibitory intestinal component so inhibition of gastric secretion by intestinal factors as i said the intestinal phase is short and it is followed by an inhibitory component although intestinal chyme slightly stimulates gastric secretion as we saw in the previous slide during the early intestinal phase of gastric secretion later on it paradoxically inhibits gastric secretion at a later stage as i said this inhibition results from at least two factor two factors or two influences number one the presence of food in the duodenum initiates reverse enterogastric reflex that inhibits gastric secretion. And this is initiated by distending the duodenum and stimulation of the mechanoreceptors. It is a short reflex. All the neurons are present in the wall of this duodenum and the stomach. Another influence that inhibits gastric uh, secretion and that is present in the small intestine or duodenum is the presence of acid fat protein breakdown products hyperosmotic or hypoosmotic fluids or any irritating factor in the duodenum this will lead to the release of several intestinal hormones like secretin gastric inhibitory peptide uh, corsistokinin vip somatostatin and all of them can inhibit gastric secretion. The functional purpose of intestinal factors that inhibit gastric secretion is to slow the emptying or the passage of chyme from the stomach when the small intestine is already filled or already overacted. So the, the main aim is to give time to the small intestine to deal with that amount of chyme before it receives any additional chyme from the stomach. Now we have a question. What keeps pepsin from digesting the protein in the stomach cells along with the food? Why pepsin doesn't cause auto digestion of the stomach wall? There are at least two reasons pepsin is secreted as or in an inactive form called pepsinogen so it cannot digest the proteins inside the chief cells that produce this enzyme pepsinogen is only activated to pepsin when it comes in contact with hydrochloric acid inside the lumen of the stomach and this HCL is secreted by the parietal cells. Another factor that can activate pepsinogen into pepsin is the presence of active pepsin molecules. So at the beginning, pepsinogen is activated to pepsin in the presence of HCL, and this uh, pepsin can activate other 
pepsinogens to pepsin because this protein digesting uh, enzyme and pepsinogen is a protein and this is called auto activation uh, the other factor that inhibits or prevents the auto digestion of the stomach by pepsin is that the stomach epithelial cells are protected from gastric juice by one to three millimeter thick layer of alkaline mucus secreted by surface mucus cells and mucus neck cells this mucus is rich in bicarbonate so the thick mucus will act as a physical barrier and the bicarbonate that is present in that layer will act as a buffer or chemical barrier that will uh, protect the stomach from being digested by pepsin and the low acidity here uh, there is a summary of all the uh, layers of the stomach wall and the function of each or the cells in each layer like uh, the mucosa the parietal cells in the gastric glands the function of the muscularis which is mixing churning and emptying and also the function of the pyloric sphincter with this slide we come to the end of the lecture uh, please don't hesitate to send me any questions by email looking for meeting you in the next lecture thank you